So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to create a table in Photoshop. Now, the obvious method is to just use the text tool and uh, you know use the rectangles for the background. But if you have a lot of information, it becomes a pain in the behind because then you have to, <coughs> um, if you update, let's say, one cell and it kind of just you know, pushes everything down, you have to manually fix all of that. And so it, it becomes a, a, a huge... Um, uh, a, a lot more work than, than it is. So the the easiest way is actually to to build the table in InDesign, and once you import into Photoshop, you can still have the main uh, editing capabilities uh, enabled. Let me show you how. So here's the table that I have um, designed, which I've imported in here. Um, I'm going to create a new table just to walk you through how to do this. So I can go to new document. Okay, and then what I probably want to do is just uh, zoom into the page, so I can under 25. And notice if you go to table, it's it's grayed out. So what we want to do is go to t uh, click on the, the the type tool, and then select the area that you want to create the table in, and then create insert table. Uh, so you have to to initialize the type tool first. And obviously, I kind of did that a little bit fast. So when you insert a table, you can uh, tell it how many rows and how many columns that you want in uh, within your table. <coughs> so here I have it. I, I'm just going to give these names, header one, maybe header two, header three, header four. Header five, and then I'm just gonna type some stuff in here. Hello, uh, hi, um, howdy, uh, Java um, cup. So I'm just going to copy this, yeah, a couple times. Um, that way it's a little bit easier to, uh, than actually filling it up with actual information. So, so essentially, I have this table built out now. Of course, if I copy this into Photoshop, it's going to look pretty ugly. Um, and I'll walk you through how to do that, uh, to you know, uh, copy into Photoshop as well. So as you can see, this it's a table, but it definitely doesn't look as clean or beautiful as that table. So uh, how do you format this? Uh, the way you would format it is you can um, select all of the cells in your table. And then what you can do is go to table, setup. Um, what I like to do is I like removing all of the strokes, uh, which are the borders essentially. So I'm just gonna make this none type none and then wrote uh and that should yeah that property should inherit to the other uh to the row and column strokes and now the notice the strokes around the 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 table is gone but i want to get rid of the stuff in the middle so cell options strokes and fills under here i can select none and if I click OK, so basically that gets rid of all the um, the uh, all of the the borders around the cells as well as the table. So now what I want to do is probably uh, give it some formatting as far as the color of the of the cells go. So one of my favorite things that I like to do is have every other color rotate. So how do you do that? You go to cell, and then you can go to uh, um, I'm sorry. Go to table, right click on it, select it, right click on it, go to table options, and then you can click on uh, alternating row strokes. Sorry, um, you can, uh, fills, alternating fills. Uh, and then under fills, you want to go to every other row. And what you can now do is I can select uh, the color that I want to alternate between. So. For the purpose of this, bam. Looks pretty mighty ugly, right? 
So how do you customize your own colors? Here's how. I can go here, and then I can um, go with maybe, uh, click on any one of these, and then click on uh, new swatch. And what that'll do is it'll inherit the properties of the one that you selected from, and basically it'll create a new swatch as a replica of that. Then you can double click on here, and you can uh, select the color that you want. But as you've noticed, um, this doesn't really give you, yeah. You know, this this is not as helpful as, um, especially if you're used to uh, uh, RGB and hexadecimals. Um, most websites, yeah, you know, they use hexadecimals for their colors. So if I, I want to let's say get sample this color, what I have to do is in Photoshop. Here's the hexadecimal color. Um, now with this, I can uh, now get the RGB information. So here I have uh, 196 and then 233. Three, so I gotta change this to RGB. 196, 233, three, and then the last one is 248. 248. And then I can click on OK. And that basically creates this swatch for me. Now I want to maybe create the swatch for this color now. Uh, so same process. So 162 or 161192. One six one one nine two and two oh four two oh four. Great, so now we have in within the swatches these two uh, different subtleties of blue that we can use. So now basically select uh, your tables uh, or your table cells and then go back to alternating fills and I can then change it to this and this for the alternating fills and um, I'm just gonna make this 100%. By default, I think it makes it 20%, uh, so change that to 100%, which is the opacity of it, okay? And bam, see how it kind of creates the nice fills for it? But what if I, I want the header to be a different color? Um, then I can select just the header, and I can go here, and I think this is blue, close enough, this cyan color here, so basically that, then uh, makes this the background uh, cyan. But what about the font? If I want to make that a different color, for the, in this case, I want white. So by default, it is uh, formats the effect. Yeah, the format that affects the container. I want to change the it to uh, yeah formatting affects text. So now I can just select um, click poly replicate this, and then. Uh, yeah, if I drag these all the way, it becomes white. So, bam. Except that creates the border for the text. That's not what I want. Uh, it's a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, let's see. Okay, so basically, once you're on the text, you can swap between the fill and the stroke. So the stroke I set to none, but the, I want to change the color of the fill. So then ch you can double click on the fill and then change that to paper or uh, the white that we created here. Uh, so make sure that um, if you have it on, you know, when you do that and then it creates this nasty stroke around it, then that means that you got to switch that and then you can change the stroke to none and then swap it to the fill and then have that as whatever color that you want. So yellow or in this case, white. So that's how we would uh, do that. And now I can select these and we're gonna change the font because I don't like the default font. So I can change it in this case to Futura to match and 
I'll change the font size as well. And obviously you can adjust the, the, the width of the table columns and so forth, um, as well as the, the height of the rows. And, and then you can you know, play around with the alignment and the formatting and all that good stuff. Um, so essentially this table is this table, except this table has information filled out and it's zoomed in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is, um, I'm actually going to delete this original one. So now what I can do is, uh, I can just select this table, select all, or actually double click in here and select all here. Oops. And then control C on the keyboard or edit and copy. And then go back to Photoshop and then edit and paste. See how paste this like nice table here? Uh, now what I can do is, um, since this one has grid lines, I can do, go to uh, hit control H on the keyboard to enable those grid lines. Um, but if that's not uh, by default enable, how do you, where do you go? Actually, I mean, that doesn't really matter a whole lot in, in this case. So to, to resize this, after you paste it in, you can go to um, image and then free transform. And then uh, yeah, if you want to maintain the aspect ratio, which I do hold down shift, and that will force it to remain the, to um, you know, keep the aspect ratio of it. So now I can then you know, resize it to whatever size I want and then press enter once I'm done. And here you have it, basically. So this is the, the table basically imported in here. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you could actually edit this text without having uh, going back and replicating this process. Um, how do you do that? I can just double click on here. And what it will do is it, since I, when, once it's copied into Photoshop, it copies it as a vector uh, file so I can Actually, when I double click, it'll open, uh, oops, Illustrator, and then I can, if I want to make changes to it, I'll be able to. So let's say I want to get rid of this. Bring this, maybe bring this up. The, uh, so the illustrator is running a little bit slow on here, but so uh, your yeah, point being is that I, I'm I'm able to to make uh, changes to this, um, you know, af after the, the the fact. So which which is is nice. Um, now, if, if you have, let's say, only a, a couple of changes, then it is probably easier if you just go uh, in here and edit it this way. But if you have, let's say, uh, more than just a couple of changes, it might be easier to go back to the InDesign and uh, change it uh, um, you know, through there and then copy it back. So in this case, I made the change here, put that on one line. I can just click on Save. Uh, and then if I exit, um, See how it reflects right over here? So that's a really, really cool thing about um, having, about designing it first in InDesign and the important here because you still keep all the ability to edit this. Uh, now, of course, when you edit, it, it, it'll open um, uh, Illustrator for you to make the changes, but it's still better than just having a solid image where you can't really do a whole lot with. And of course, you can also edit the background color here. So if I wanna make this the top here a different color, um, you'll be able to. Um, and if I, yeah, obviously if I save this and I, uh, and I close it, it'll reflect here, which is, is, is really nice. Um, the other way, obviously, is, uh, and what I recommend is definitely save the, the table file. So if you have to go back to InDesign to make a bunch of changes, you'll be able to. So in this case, I kind of deliberately did this to, um, to show you guys uh, how I would go back and make changes. So notice here, the Thursday is kind of cut off and 
and which looks kind of funky there. So I can actually just drag this out and uh, probably select all these and disable, oops. Or it's just this one. So I don't want this to, to hyphenate basically. Uh, so now everything looks um, a lot better. Um, so now what I'll do is is save this, uh, and then I can select this, and and if I want to make this area smaller, notice when I you know um, uh, when I uh, originally pasted it. Now I think now if I go to edit and then free transform because I opened it and then saved it again in, uh, in Illustrator, it removed all of that extra white space. But if I copy it directly, um, it's gonna have all that white space. So to eliminate that white space, basically you just gotta shrink the container a little bit um, in InDesign. Because note that when we first created this, we created a text container and then we insert a table within text container. So basically, we need to shrink the text container to within the size of the table. So now if I select this and then I paste it in here, you know, see, like, it, there's still going to be a little bit of extra left, but that's fine. Uh, you just have to compensate for it, basically. And... Voila. So, you know, here you have it. Uh, this is how you would create a table in Photoshop. Well, create a table in InDesign to have it uh, importable to uh, Photoshop and then also maintain all of the editing skills. Now, obviously, you need InDesign as well as, or you don't have to have Illustrator, but you need InDesign for this process to, uh, to work. And Illustrator is nice if you want to be able to edit these uh, afterwards without necessarily having to re uh, import it from, um, from Illustrator. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. And if you have, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and uh, go to my uh, site, yanshenghuang.com. Uh, follow me on my social media, uh, and check out the, the latest news. I post a lot of really interesting things, so, so check that out. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching and thank you for subscribing.